right so this video is um, to show you how to use uh, with a spider in Windows uh, because you know that's actually one of the more difficult platforms to get um, with a spider to work so what you're seeing here is a selection of virtual machines and that is a non concern for you because you know I'm assuming that you're using either a um, your own personal computer or you're using the computer at the lab so you don't need to use this I don't have a Windows I don't have Windows installed on my computer so I have to use a virtual machine <clears throat> so this part you know once again should not concern you because you're, you're not using a virtual machine and I'm going to turn this into full screen mode let's see usual full screen mode uh, button doesn't work let me see I have anything here that I can use hmm. I'm looking for a control that let me turn this into full screen mode and apparently there is no easy way to do it so that's okay uh, we can always go to view and do full screen here there we go that helps a little all right so the next thing we need to do is to get to the browser okay and there we go because the very first thing I need to do is to sign in to um, the Google Drive so I have access to um, the archive file you know that I need to access and there are also a few other things that I need to do um, so that's why I need to sign in first Which basically means if you want to install um, with a spider, you have to do the same thing. All right, all right. So we are in, and I just go to Google Drive, and the way you access. Oh great! All right, there we go. All right, so um, the way I get to the assembler is a little different because you know I am the owner of the share drive so it's easier for me to get to it you can get to it using the um, uh, using using the share drive link you know, from the first module in canvas and then you have to go to processor it's in that particular folder and in here you, if you scroll down a little bit you should see with a spider uh, sig with a spider dot seven z so this is for Windows people, and this one is for Linux or um, Mac OS people. So if you're using Mac OS or Linux, you know, this is the file that you need. If you're using Windows, you know, this is the one that you need. I'm not going to give you guys you know, the hyperlink here you know, because you know, the hyperlink changes if I upload a new version. So I cannot do that. Um, I cannot just give you a link because it will link to um, possibly an older version. So right click on it and then just click download. Depending on your internet connection, this may take a while because it is 360 something megabytes. It's super fast here because I am on the school computer um, and this is a virtual machine. So it has very good connectivity to the network. The next thing you wanna do is not to click it open, okay? You know, the next thing you need to do is to right click or, or click this one, but then you want to select um, open uh, this is a right click and then you say open files uh, show in folder sorry show in folder so that's what you need to do so now the question is do you have 7-zip installed if you already have 7-zip installed you should be able to right click and get to 7-zip and then go here and say extract to sync with a spider so I'm gonna do this you know, assuming that 7-zip is already installed because this will take a while too <clears throat> all right so if you do not 
have um, 7 zip installed you can go ahead and install that because it's a free program it's an open source program so you just look for 7 zip in Google um, in, the, in the search engine and then go straight to download here and depending on which windows you have most people will be using the 64-bit uh, Windows x86 you know so this is the usual version that most people use or this one either an executable or an MSI file so one or the other would work uh, this is assuming that you can install programs on your computer if you cannot then you probably want to use you know, this file here which is going to be a hmm, this is not going to work for most people because it's a chicken and egg problem so I think most people just need to go for the first link which is a an executable for 64-bit windows uh, or um, this one here which is also um, for 64-bit windows but you know the format is different this is an executable this is an install file and then once you install 7-zip you should be able to do what I just did a little bit earlier um, so we'll go ahead and check on the progress and you can see 7-zip you know, actually shows you the progress um, without having to go back to the window this is like really really fast um, it is writing uh, in excess of 7 megabytes per second um, typically if you have a thumb drive which I recommend people to do you know, if you want to be able to work on um, if you want to be able to use with a spider when you're at school using the school computer you want to basically install everything on a thumb drive so that way you will have access to uh, this tool which also includes you know, Logisim uh, 310 so it's basically completely self-contained all right so now that that is done we are going to take a look at the folder okay so I apologize for the screen flickering like this because if I go all the way to the top the browser takes over and wants to minimize or not minimize but wants to show the the rest of the browser interface all right so um, <clears throat> after you decompress it will create its own folder which is you know this one here and I guess Windows is not all done yet because it's not letting me click on the folder so there we go all right so double click on that folder and it will open up um, and show you a subfolder which is called Sigwin double click again and it will show you, you know, this particular uh, so inside the Sigwin folder we have uh, five items um, you want to open up this you want to double click on this particular um, icon which is Sigwin dash portable and it will take a little bit of time especially the first time um, because it has to settle a few things in order to bring up the console or the command line interface which is going to look a little bit awkward you know it doesn't look like a normal uh, user interface it's a little bit fancy so this is the user interface uh, when you see the blinky cursor next to the dollar sign it is ready so you can try a few things um, you can do a ls you know, which is list um, it will show you the folders you know, within the current folder so what we are at right now is we're at the root of the uh, quote unquote user folder um, so we have to go to the river spider folder first and to do that we use the cd or change directory command to river spider there you go and then you can do another ls over here and see what is in this folder so in this folder we have um, a bunch of files and it is not set up to run right out of the bat okay so what you really want to do is to read the readme file um, inside sigwin it has full access to all the tools that you normally have access to in windows so you can do a notepad on readme.md and it opens up and it's a not <laughs> it's not easy to read because it is intended to be read using uh, it's a md file or a markdown file but it does contain all the instructions that you need in order to use it but i will demonstrate it anyway so you don't have to worry about this part all right so um, <clears throat> now we have to switch back to the uh, web interface 
because we got a few things to do here. So what we'll do next is to go to the processor subfolder and go to the assembler uh, sheet, Google Sheet over here. Um, because I'm the owner of this sheet, you know, the uh, presented menu may be a little bit different. So you right click and then, you know, I can use uh, make a copy. You may or may not be able to make a copy. Um, so I'm not 100% sure whether, you, whether you, can, you have that option to make a copy. If not, okay, you can always you know, double click on the file. And when you, when you get inside, go to file. And then from here, you can make a copy. So when you do make a copy, make sure that you make a copy uh, before you do this. I'm going to change a few things you know, just so that I can differentiate you know, whether this is the uh, assembler that I use in class versus you know, the assembler that I'm demonstrating here. So I'm going to change the name to assembler-demo. And I will also change you know, where the folder is um, connected to or where it is located. So instead of you know, in the processor folder, I am going to go to the temp folder here. Um, yeah, so this temp folder is not uh, accessible to you because I'm using it for demonstration purposes. So we'll select this one and then we click make a copy. There we go. So after a, make, a copy is made, I believe you know, the new one is going to open automatically. And I was right. Okay, so this is assembler dash demo. It is the new version. So I'm gonna close the one that I normally use in class so I don't get confused, you know, which one is which one. All right, so you can use this you know, assembler, you know, just like uh, the usual assembler that you have used already. Um, but, you know, we're gonna, we have to do a few things, you know, to make it uh, so that it's accessible from uh, Brief of Spider. All right, so a few things you have to do. Um, the first thing you need to do is to go to extensions go to apps script and click on it. So this is the underlying JavaScript code behind the assembler along with you know, all the cool stuff. But you don't have to you know, deal with most of it. You know, there's only one, a few things you need to do right now. The first one is you have to go to deploy and go to new deployment. And then you want to click on web app and you can give it a description. You know, it doesn't have to be fancy. You know, you can just say, you know, uh, tax assembler. <coughs> doesn't matter what you want. Doesn't. Uh, it does not matter how you want to name it. Okay, this is. Uh, you. It's not even seen by most people. Um, under web app, you want to um, execute as me. And you also want to make sure that you know, anyone. Uh, has access to it and not only myself. And then you click deploy. It will take a little bit of time and then when it comes back it will give you an URL and I'll, you know, we'll get to that point. Give it, give it a few moments. All right. So uh, authorize access, okay, because it, it needs uh, access to your files and it will bring up your, you know, uh, whatever account you are in. So you just click that and grant the access down here and say allow. There we go. All right, so this is the important part. What you need to do here is under app web app, there's a URL, click copy. So now it is, uh, the URL is copied to the clipboard and then you can click OK. And then what we do now is we switch back to the SigWin um, and you, the, you, the user interface. Make sure that you are in Rifa Spider, okay? You make sure that your current working directory is Rifa Spider. And then at this point you can do a cat and then a greater than uh, web app dot URL. So make sure that this name is spelled correctly. It's all lowercase web app dot URL. Press the enter key and then you can paste um, the URL that we saved a little bit earlier. Um, you know, right click on the keyboard will do that in Windows and then press the enter key and then press control D to 
end the um, to mark the end of the file. So I'm typing Control D on the keyboard right now. Okay, so that takes care of one part of it. The other part is you need to have a secret string, which is this file, and it is by default empty. So what you need to do is to find um, a name that you want to use, your, a, your name, address, you know, something, okay, your, as your secret string. With this one, you can use Notepad, you know, because this is just a regular text file. And in Notepad, you can just you know, type you know, something like um, Appy, okay? Exclamation point, Control S, save the file. And then you know, I'll leave this open for now because you know, I need to remember you know, what my secret word is or secret string is, which is happy with an exclamation point. So now what you need to do is to go back to the, um, uh, the app script interface. And what you need to do now is to go to gen digest. Okay, so there's a function on line 110. Uh, 100, not, excuse me, 100, which is Gen Digest, and then what you want to do is to change my secret string here to exactly what we have in the secret string, which, uh, if I remember correctly, is happy with an exclamation point. So happy exclamation point, and then you want to um, uh, change which function to run to Gen Digest. So go here. And then you want to click debug. Do not use run. Run is not going to help you. You have to use debug. So after you run it, it's going to give you some really obscure output like this. So what you need to do now is to copy this entire thing. So go to execution log and uh, select everything from the open square bracket all the way to the end bracket over here. Select and then control C to copy. Okay, so I just type Control C on the keyboard. Now you're okay. It's okay to uh, close the execution log. And then what you need to do now is to go back here and then select you know, um, the array definition of D inside simple of. So you basically select this portion here all the way up to and including the end bracket. And then now you paste, Control V to paste. So, uh oh, it does not work. I did not copy correctly from the other side. All right, so that means I have to repeat what I <laughs> what I uh, did earlier. Okay, so we go to debug. Um, I suspect that you know because I'm running this inside the virtual machine, so Control C on the keyboard is probably hijacked by Linux. So Windows never saw the Control C. So let me see if I can do a right click and then copy. There we go. All right, so hopefully this will work this time. Okay, so we now go back to this one and then we just select the entire array up to and including the end square bracket and then we paste over this. So right click again and then we say paste down here. Allow. There we go. So I believe that is changed. Okay. So once everything is done, Control S will save the file. Or you can always go to, um, I guess not. I thought there's another way to save the file, but Control S is the only way to save the file. So now it should work. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and test it. I'm, I will leave this window open just in case I need to get back here. So I could use, uh, go back to the SigWin user interface, which is here. And it's still on Notepad. I don't need Notepad right now, so I can close that. Oh, the other thing that you might also want to do is to go back to Gen Digest and change this happy to something else. Okay, something other than your password. Uh, so that people who can read this file would not be able to actually know your password. So you just have to type over you know, whatever is already here, like not my <laughs> password, okay? And then Control S and save the file again. So this way, if somebody somehow has read access to your um, assembler file, will still not know your actual password to use it. 
Um, so the whole idea is we don't want other people to mess around with our assembler and still be able to sh you know, let other people view what is on the assembler. But we, won't let, we don't want them to have the ability to change the file. So that's why the password protection is kind of important. All right, so with all this done, Control S, save the file again, and then go back to second win. And now we can test it. Um, the first thing I would do is to take a look at, you know, test.ttpasm. I use Vim, you know, because, you know, I'm used to it, but you can certainly use Notepad or anything that is just a plain text editor. So uh, Notepad, uh, test.ttpasm. And you can see, you know, it just opened up the file. You know, this is a loop, there's a loop in here. I mean, it just takes a little bit of time. You know, that's not the main point. The main point is uh, we want to make sure the program is here. And then you close Notepad, and now we can try to run it. To run um, River Spider, you type dots, you have to be inside the River Spider folder. So you have to make sure that the prompt is indicating that River Spider is the current working directory. Then you type dot slash submit dot sh and then the name of the source file, which in this case is test.ttpasm. And then you press the enter key. So if all goes well, you know, it's going to say you know, submit. Uh oh, something did not work. Okay, assembler finished. The source file did not assemble correctly. Better fix the source code first. All right, that is interesting. So we're going to go to source here and go to RAM file. It did assemble correctly. So I do not understand why it said it did not work. Hmm. All right. Um, I'm going to do some quick and uh, quick debugging here. not authenticated oh okay so uh, what that means is i messed up um, the uh, happy exclamation point thing um, let's see what um, the secret string dot txt has right here cat secret string it is happy okay so this one is okay so let me go back to the other side and change this to happy exclamation point. And then we'll test run gen digest just like we did before and click debug. It generated this array. And then we copy that. <coughs> and then we go back to here. I believe this is correct. Hmm starts with 93 all right so let's delete that first and then right click and then paste all right and if I remember correctly this is the same control s save the file again oh I forgot I okay now I remember why it doesn't work you have to redeploy it because uh, if it is already deployed you know it, it's um, it will maintain different versions um, and it does not automatically redeploy, re which means you know, the web interface is still only seeing the one that you know, was not set up correctly. So now we have to go to deploy and you know, click new deployment. Same deal, you know, it doesn't change the defaults, so you can just leave it the way it is. Click deploy and we have to recopy the URL because every time you make changes, the URL changes. So we have to copy again, <coughs> and then we switch back to the uh, command line interface, and then we have to resave that you know, um, web app here. So we have the cat greater than web app dot URL, and then we have to right click, you know, paste the new link into here, and then uh, press enter key, and then press control D again, because you know, this URL is different from the one before. All right, so I think it should work now. So I'm gonna go back to the script, click done, and then uh, switch back to the user interface here. And just repeat the command that I had earlier, which is dot slash submit dot sh, a space, and then test dot ttp asm. 
press the other key. Okay, that's good. Okay, now that is correct. All right, so this is supposed to be done, and we can double check that it is indeed done. We go back to the spreadsheet, go to the assembler demo. Well, in this case, I named it assembler demo, but you can name it any way you want. But what we want to do is to go to analysis, and it should look like this, okay? You, if you follow all the steps, you should end up with um, the analysis having the exact same content that I'm showing you right now. Um, and that pretty much concludes the demonstration. Um, if anyone wants to, I can also, you know, I think that uh, there's, a, there's a written instruction already, you know, the readme file is the um, written instruction. So this one you know, um, is just a more, I guess, a media rich way to show you how to get this done. All right. Um, so with this all set up, you know, then it is much easier for you to trace program execution and debug your program because that's what we'll be doing you know, until the end of the semester is to write code and with you know, most programs that you're going to write, there will be some bugs, and this is the best way to debug a program. All right, so that ends today's this particular uh, recording, and I'll upload it right away.